Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel, Justin and Jess. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I made this Live Edge Epoxy River coffee table. Let's dive into the video. So Jess and I, we've had this slab of walnut for about two years now, and it's taken some time for us to figure out what to do with it. Till recently, we decided let's make an Epoxy River coffee table out of it. The slab, as you can see, is not quite wide enough to be a coffee table on its own. And we had thought initially, maybe we'll put some inlays to you know, support those cracks and just let it be a table as it is. But it needs to be just a little bit wider. So that's where we got the idea for the epoxy to begin with. And so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rip the rest of this wood. As you can see, it's already got a pretty massive crack in it, about three quarters of the way. So there's just a little bit that I've got to cut here with my circular saw in order to separate it. We've not made a video on this quite yet, but recently we bought a planer and this has been an absolute game changer for us when it comes to actually making projects, making furniture, tables, and charcuterie boards and everything in between. The thickness of this slab right now is just a little under two inches as you can see. So I'll set the depth stop feature on this planer to about an inch and a quarter. I don't think I'm gonna go down that far, but we'll put it there just in case. Thankfully, I've got just enough material and length that any kind of snipe that rears its ugly head while I'm planing these slabs won't matter too much because I'm going to essentially uh, remove that, those portions of the wood in the, at the end. So here's my process for planing these two slabs of wood. While I don't have a jointer, I'm gonna use the planer as a jointer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is level out at least one side of both of the slabs. And so that's what you're gonna see here. The next step is to use this sled that I created just out of three quarter inch plywood. It's not the greatest sled ever built. I think melamine would probably be a little bit better, uh, but this is gonna work just fine for this. I'm gonna flip over the slab and then use some hot glue to secure it and then shim it up in any low spots. And this should help give me a, a really nice flat slab. And then from there, just repeat that same process on the other slab. I want to take just a quick second to welcome any first time viewers. If you're new to this channel, my name is Justin. My wife's name is Jess and we do woodworking and DIY projects, home design stuff. So if that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing. Once both pieces are flattened and level, I'll use the planer again just to get both of them to the same height. I know one of them is a little bit thicker than the other, and so we'll start with that one and get both of them to the same height. Moving on to the next phase, we're gonna build a mold for the table. I feel like I've gotten a lot better at this, at least the building of the mold process. I use melamine uh, and I, I got this at the Home Depot. Uh, it's relatively cheap and I'll be able to use it for future projects as well. So what I'll do is set the slabs up how I want them and try to position them where I want them. And then I need to measure and cut for the walls. I'm gonna make these walls about three inches high, give or take, they don't have to be absolutely perfect. And one thing you'll notice in my videos is that I've learned to measure, it's, they say measure twice, cut once. I measure like five times and then cut. But unfortunately, it doesn't always work out that way. As you can see, I make the cut and it falls and it breaks. But I have a solution for that and hopefully this will work. the ends of this mold, the end pieces, I'm gonna make these shorter so my long pieces will go the length of the bottom portion of the mold, if that makes sense. Tyvek tape is my go-to for a mold release just to ensure that the wood and epoxy does not stick to the mold and will release from the mold very easily. It is a little expensive, but it works. So I'll do my best to cover every square inch of this mold with the Tyvek tape. The next thing I'm gonna do is apply a quick drying silicone caulk to the bottom of the walls just to ensure that there is no leakage whatsoever. And I'll also do that to the exterior as well. 
I try to give about 24 hours just to ensure that it's completely hardened and completely dry. And then the next thing I'll do is pre-drill my holes for the wood screws and then put this thing together. Again, I'm going to apply the silicone caulk to the interior and exterior around the edges of the wall just to ensure that there's no leakage whatsoever. Also, by no means am I a professional at applying this stuff, so if you have any recommendations or suggestions on how to do the application process for this silicone caulk, let me know in the comments below. Now you'll see here that the wood doesn't go all the way to the end of the mold and I don't want to fill that with epoxy. That would be a waste of epoxy. So I'm going to use this other piece from a previous project as my wall for the length of this table. This gives me the flexibility of being able to make a longer coffee table in the future if need be. Now it's time to pour the epoxy. And before that, I'm gonna apply just a little bit more of the silicone caulk just to make sure that in any spots where I feel like it's gonna leak underneath the wood or any gaps, I wanna fill those as much as possible. For this project, I'm gonna need about four liters of epoxy total based on my measurements. I was pretty accurate. I was just a little short. There's no problem at all adding that in the end here. I'm also using a black onyx color for the pigment. I think it looks really good. It's not a completely matte solid black, but it's also not overwhelmingly sparkly. It's got a little bit of a sparkle to it. It looks really good. It helps it stand out. Additionally, I'm only gonna pour about half right now and that's unintentional but also intentional because you don't want to do that thick of epoxy. Um, I also ran out of epoxy so I had to order a little bit more so we'll do our first pour and then in about 24 to 48 hours we'll do the second pour. I use ultra clear epoxy. I've worked with them in the past. They're a company in Murfreesboro, Tennessee which is just south of Nashville so be sure to check them out. I'll link their stuff in the description box below. After using the blowtorch for the bubbles, I'm gonna use some weights from one of my dumbbells just to add some additional pressure to the wood and some weight to the wood. Unfortunately, I don't have enough clamps. I would use more clamps instead of the weight if I had that, but I'm working with what I've got for right now. Like I said, I did run out of epoxy, which worked out conveniently for the amount that I needed to pour. So the rest of it came in about a day and a half later, and so I'm gonna get this mixed up and pour the rest of my measurement. Also, here is a little tip. If this is a project that you're gonna undertake after watching this video, make sure you level your mold, level your table and shim it in any low spots. Do that before you start pouring your epoxy. All right, it's been just a little over a week now, which should be plenty of time for this thing to have cured. So we're gonna demold it now. Also, I didn't show this in the video, but after about 12 hours after that last pour, I went back downstairs and just with like a, a skewer, you know, like a meat and vegetable skewer, I went down there and made my swirl pattern in the epoxy that I wanted. It was just at the right time where it hadn't cured fully that it would mess up the epoxy, but not too soon that it would settle back into whatever shape it wanted to. Now on to the planning process. This is very tedious work and not my favorite part, but I am proud of myself for how I was able to construct this DIY router sled setup here. Basically, I just repurposed the mold that I used for the table, flipped it over and turned it into my surface and routering jig. I also did it in a way that I can reverse it, flip it back over and still use it as a mold for future projects. I also did it in a way that I can reverse it, flip it back over, and still use it as a mold for future projects. Lastly, this step is for the excess epoxy, not for the wood. Moving on to the sanding process, I'm gonna start out with 80 grit, move up to 120, 180, and then finally 240, spritzing with a little bit of water in between each sand to erase the grain, and then I'll use a pencil to mark on the wood and the epoxy for reference. The biggest reason why you would mark with a pencil is just for reference to know how much you have taken off in your sanding process so that every bit of the surface that you're sanding is perfectly level and smooth and uniform. 
I'm also gonna use my shop vac to clean the orbital sander and the top of my surface just to remove as much of the fine microscopic dust particles as possible. And that will help ensure that I get a even and smooth finish in between each sand. This is and will continue to be my process until I can move up in the orbital sander game, get something a little bit more high end, and possibly even combo that with a good dust extractor so that those two working together can remove as much of those microscopic fine dust particles as possible. That way I can save time between each sanding. Now it's time to move on to my favorite part of building any table or any project, and that's applying a good finish. I use the Rubio Mono Coat oil with the activator that speeds up the drying curing process. And I'm using the color Pure, so there's no pigment in this whatsoever. It's gonna come out a very clean color. It's three parts oil, one part activator, and I got these little syringes off of Amazon for super cheap. So I'll use about 15 milliliters of the oil and five milliliters of the activator. And this is gonna be plenty for both the top sides and the back. This is that moment when all of that hard work pays off for me and I'm able to see what the final product essentially is gonna look like and how the oil really makes the wood and the color of this epoxy pop. Lastly, I'll use my buffer to buff in the oil on the top and the sides. Use a paper towel to wipe off any excess and then I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this thing over and repeat the same thing on the bottom side. I did have a little bit of a hard time finding a good pair of legs for this table. After a couple of weeks of research, I found these off of Etsy. It's a guy that makes them on there. They're these 16 inch high trapezoid shaped legs. That's what I was looking for. And I also had the option of getting the steel coated in a, in a black powder coat. I think these things look phenomenal. This is the first project that I've used inserts on. So I'm a little nervous, but also excited because I think that this definitely takes up the overall value and aesthetic of a table like this. So I'll use my Brad Point drill bit to mark the holes, pre-drill them with my drill bit, and then use my hex key to insert the inserts. I am so incredibly pleased and proud of how this coffee table turned out. I was not expecting it to look this good, to be honest with you. And just to brag on myself just a little bit, I'm just proud of the effort and the work that was put into it and the result. Um, there was definitely some obstacles that I faced and some roadblocks that I faced, as with any project, as you might know. Um, and I think it's important to, to learn from those mistakes, push through those obstacles, and try to get to that point where you're, you finish the project and it's something to be proud of. And I can confidently say that. I can confidently say I am very proud of this table. With that said, I hope that this video was helpful or encouraging to you, maybe even just enjoyable to watch. But if you're doing a project on your own, whether it's a coffee table like this or any kind of DIY project, it's important to press through those mistakes, learn from those mistakes, learn from those failures, and move to the next step to get better because that next thing that you do is going to be better. And I would say that out of everything that Jess and I have done, this is probably one of the best projects that we've done and completed. I will say that this coffee table is for sale. So if you're watching this video and uh, it's not like a year or two years down the road, it's probably still for sale. Uh, if not, um, on our Etsy store or our website, you will find uh, this item or something like it. If you want a custom coffee table and you're inter interested in that, feel free to reach out to us. We would love to make one for you. And be sure to like and hit the subscribe button and notification bell if you wanna see more content just like this. Uh, again, thank you so much for watching this video, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.